she had been in Key West on their honeymoon and her and her husband were watching a sunset and she said a coconut about that big fell out of a coconut palm down there, hit her on the head from about 10 feet away. And she said she could figure out why a person would die from a coconut, real coconut, hitting you from about 70 feet. So, you know, teaching people to be precaution or, you know, be careful around bees, that's a definite thing to do. Uh, honeybees, you've got to be, even as a beekeeper, aware of how the bees react. If you walk up to a beehive and you're noticing the bees that, okay, you know it's your hive of bees, but you notice as they're entering the hive, instead of landing and walking in, if that hive is looking a little different, when you walk up to it, it's flying in there, or they start bumping you as soon as you're, you know, 10 or 12 feet from it. Be aware, because it just happens that, you know, usurpation could have happened, your hive could have died in the three months that you were away from it, and African bees took it over, or the queen, they replaced the queen in there, and she went out and got mated with uh, all Africanized drones, which would be highly unusual normally because of the way they mate. But <clears throat> something could have changed in that hive. Never disturb a nest of bees. That's the best thing you can teach the public. Uh, where I was saying where you get bumped by bees, in Arizona, I was talking to actually, uh, in California, I talked to the ADF out there, and there was a couple groups that were there that were hikers that I talked to and told them about bees bumping them. Well, they were hiking in Arizona, and they actually started bees were bumping them as they were walking forward. Well, as soon as you start getting bumped by bees, they start hitting you in the face and stuff, don't start looking for the bee nest. Turn around, walk away. And uh, they did that, and they went and told the park ranger. They went and the park ranger went back, found the swarm of bees, and it turned out to be after nice. Had they had kept going, it was right on the edge of the trail, and most likely they'd have had a stinging incident. So teaching the you know general public that, the tractor operators, this is getting back into what I've talked about before, uh, don't drive the tractor right, even if they're European bees in hives where uh, they're out in the cotton field or doing watermelons or something. You don't drive the tractor right beside it, especially dump trucks or any of your trucks. The exhaust will set off bees. Doesn't matter what they are. But being aware of your, uh, the house, anywhere your awnings and stuff like that. I like this guy. I think that's not me. It might look like me sometimes. But before you enter into a building, your work sheds and stuff, you always want to make sure there's no bees in there. Uh, it's a lot easier to not go into the building than once you're in there and you shut the door and you upset them because they will take you on. And normally they win. And where you do your outside activities, your hiking and working, picnic and everything. That's all of them. Should be the last one. During a stinging incident, what do you want to do? This will cover what I'm pretty much. Don't sit there and squat. This is my favorite thing. The uh, person that graduated in Georgia here, Jamie Ellis, a lot of y'all know him. We won't hold that against him. No. Jamie describes when you're out there swatting at honeybees, because of the way the bees' eyes are, honeybees have the two complex eyes and then they've got three simple eyes. So if you think of a honeybee, as you're sitting there doing this, Jamie says actually what they're seeing is you ground guiding them, coming straight at you, and so they come and try to sting you. And that's what ends up happening. Hiding underwater does not work. Uh, don't try to attempt to remove the swarms. The last two people that died out in Texas, one of them was the 41-year-old that died was uh, actually on the roof of a building, tried to remove a hive of bees, a swarm of bees that was in the awning, and uh, about probably 15, 20 feet up, the bees started stinging, his dad was actually inside the house. He jumped off the roof and actually died from the bee stinging him, the impact, and apparently he had a heart attack. So all together. Uh, so 
don't try to do that. Seek shelter, get into a you know, bee-proof building, and call 911. Have somebody else try to take care of the bees that's trained on. And, and in, now as a beekeeper, the, let me back that up. As a beekeeper, the rescue, the rescue part, it says do not attempt rescue. As a beekeeper, I think that we could probably be trained well enough. Most of us have a bee suit. Most of us know how to light a smoker. You're probably not going to have time to light the smoker, but a water hose on this works great. Bee suit, you can get out there and you know how to get the bees off the person. You strip them down, break the bees off of them. You get them into the house first or into the building. So that's something your EMS has to be trained on, and that's something as beekeepers. The bee suits that we normally wear, where it's a t-shirt and a bee veil, that doesn't work with upset African bees. They, they sting, you'll have five or 600 stings in no time at all. Uh, so you need an actual good bee suit. And that's mine that I like to just run. When all else doesn't work, run. So. Yeah, I'm getting there though. These are actually, whoops, they could. Those are actually our cow people. Ready for me to talk on the formic, or you want to keep the... Uh, no, go ahead with formic, but... Okay, actually my formic, what 